Hey there, yeah you, my favorite listener, you, yes, I'm so glad you're back. This is the second part of my interview with my friend Jamie Swindell. I hope you enjoyed the first part. Now let's hear the rest of it. For example, initially, it was all about kids and speaking to the youth, helping them find their purpose and their passion. Then one day, one of my friends came to me and said, hey, have you ever heard of contract training? Mm-hmm. Nope. I mean, I, I, mean I, well, I, said, I, said, I said, no, I have because anytime I speak, there's a contract that's signed <laughs> first. <laughs> I'm going to speak for this amount of time on this topic, and here's where you will pay me. And right. until that contract is signed, I don't speak. So, yes, I understand contract training. She said, no, that's – you sign a contract, but well, that's different. Contract right. training is this niche industry where there are companies out there that will do all the marketing to get people to come to different seminars right. on all kinds of topics from communication to leadership to management to computer stuff to – HR to speaking, whatever it is, whatever, th- whatever topic someone needs to learn to be more effective in business, there are these companies put seminars on to teach people how to do that. The problem is they don't have enough speakers and trainers that can deliver those topics. So their marketing is better than the amount of speakers they have to fill these seminars. So they actually look for speakers and trainers to do the seminars for them. So they do all the marketing and then they hire people to do the seminars. And I was like, hold on, you mean to tell me I don't have to do any of the marketing, no brochures, no advertising, no TV commercials, no direct mail, no websites, no social media, nothing that they have a seminar. That's kind of like already set up. The people already scheduled and I just show up work my magic and leave and get paid. Oh, sign me up. <laughs> that sounds right. great. That it just fit into what I'm doing already. She said, well, that's what I think it is. I just saw this advertisement in the classified ads and she's looking for a job for herself. And she mm-hmm. saw that and said, Hey, this might be a fit for you. You can add that to your list of clients. Right. Who? Cool. So it just so happened the next day there was an audition for one of these companies and so it was, a, it was a, the first part of it was the info session to kind of explain to you what contract training was all about in the company and what they do and all that. And then you go to lunch. And then if you like what you heard, you come back after lunch, and do an audition. So it sounds good to me. I came back, did the audition. They said, man, we love you. Love your energy. Think you'd be great with our company. Okay, sounds good. So then I flew out to Kansas City to meet with the founder and their executive staff and go through their training and all that. And they say, yes, we definitely love you. You're in. You, you'll, you'll be one of our trainers. So I took them on as a client because I'm, I'm independent the whole way through. So right. they're, they're, you know, they're, not a, they're not hiring you as an employee. They're, you're, they're one of your vendors. They're one of your clients. So right. it's my client list. So start training with them, giving seminars all around the country on their dime. They pay for the hotel and the flights and the rental cars and all that stuff. And then you just show up, you give your seminar on whatever the topic was. I initially started speaking on uh, communication and leadership and customer service, things like that. Um, Enjoyed it. It It's phenomenal. Um, And the way you mainly make your money, and this was the problem initially, and is the problem for most contract trainers, is you only get paid a few hundred bucks to actually do your seminar. That's your speaking. Right. right? And people like, they, they stop right there because you hear Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, they make, you know, how many thousands of dollars to show up. You make a few hundred bucks. But where you make your real money is in the back end sales of the different products that that seminar company offers the attendees. 
Right. So maybe you're teaching an HR seminar. Well, that seminar company will make HR resources available. Audio programs that teach people how to hire the right people, body language, what are some of the HR laws you need to be accustomed to, accustomed with and familiar with. So different products that's associated with that seminar that you would sell as part of your seminar that which enhances the knowledge that the people are gaining in the seminar room. Because they're only right. there for six hours, nine to four mainly. And there's only so much you really can teach in six hours about whatever right. topic, HR, leadership, whatever. And most people are only going to retain about seven to 10% of what you taught them that day. Right. So if you truly want to help people, then you want to get the resources in their hand so they can listen to that audio program, that DVD, that download, whatever the tool is over and over again, because repetition is the mother of all learning. So the more effective you become at selling the resource that will enhance the quality of their life, ding, 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 what do I do? I help right. people give them the tools that empower them and equip them to create a lifestyle that they want. So it's right in line with my purpose. The more you can do that, the more money you make. Right. And so initially, I didn't know how to sell. Most people don't know how to sell. And so that was a problem until I got really serious, hired a coach, started reading all types of books and going to seminars about influence, persuasion, covert hypnosis, um, uh, understanding embedded suggestions, being able to package what you're saying in a way that people want to take it home with them in right. a product, a service, a book, a CD, et cetera. And then income went through the roof and became the number one trainer in contract training across all the companies and have coached many other trainers on how to do the same exact thing. Um, so it's a great vehicle that allows you to fill your calendar when you're not doing your other stuff. Right. So you a costume of income coming in and you get really good at learning how to sell. And then those sales skills will help you in your other enterprises as well. Because no matter what you do, you're selling. Yeah. People say, so- well, I don't, I don't like to sell. Well, you have a hard life because when you are <laughs> looking to get married, you're selling yourself to that other person. You yeah. want to go on a, You want to get a new job. You got to sell yourself to that employer as to why they should hire you and not the other applicant. You got to sell your kids on why they should eat their vegetables, why they should do their homework, whatever right. it is you have to sell. You have to convince people to see things from your perspective. So the better you are at that, the better of a lifestyle you're able to create for yourself and your family. Right. So you said that somebody just saw an ad. That was how you got introduced to it. What, what if somebody is now looking to get started? Should they be looking for ads? Should I just be Googling contract trainers? Are there specific places, companies that I should check out first in order to get started? Sure. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of companies that do contract training. The two big ones are Fred Pryor Seminars and Skill Path Seminars. Nice. So you could Google you know, either one or both of those companies. I recommend looking at both of them. And right. some trainers actually work with both. You know, I, I've only been working with skill, with uh, Fred Pryor, but I coach people at both at Fred Pryor and Skill Pass. So I'm very familiar with both companies. And again, there are probably other companies out there as well. I know those two the most. They've been around the longest. They're the two largest ones. And they're the most diverse. Because right. any topic you can imagine, you know, that deal with, deals with business topics um, these companies offer. So those start with those two, look at those again, skill path and Fred Pryor. And then on both of their websites, they kind of tell you how to contact them, how to get it, you know, how to actually fill out, uh, how to apply to be a contract trainer and their whole process. So those would be the two that I would start with. Excellent. Excellent. So one of the things that it's, especially if, if, if you've been online at any point in life and see all of the different things that people are doing, they told they share with you the glamour. You see, you see the Ferrari, you see the planes, you see all that stuff. <laughs> no in doubt. The background. But they don't usually share the pitfalls or the hard stuff. So if you're going to get involved in contract training, what are some of the pitfalls? What are some of the things that someone would need to look out for or prepare themselves for as they get involved in this this enterprise? Yeah, the, the biggest one I just shared, which is the selling aspect of it. Some people, and like myself, when I, when I first got involved, even though they told me selling was part of it when I went to the certification process, it didn't quite click 
Uh, I think it's probably because we were overwhelmed with all the stuff you were learning about the company and the history and the paperwork and all the minutia of the things that are involved that the selling part kind of just, you know, slipped in and slipped out. And so, and I think that's the case for most trainers. Uh, People think that, Hey, I can just go give a great seminar and I'll just make a lot of money. Just right. Somehow, some way, they don't really pay attention to how they are compensated. And again, if you if you only give the seminar and you don't produce high sales, you're only making a few hundred bucks a day. So right. when you do the math of how much money you make over the time you left your house to the time you come back to your house, right. at the end of that week, if you only gave the seminars, you'll be earning less than minimum wage. Right. So that's, that's the big drawback. People can only do this for a certain amount of time if they don't get really good at the selling aspect. Unless right. they have a spouse that's really wealthy or they have enough money to take care of them. So if this person, they, they can just do this as a hobby. They're not really worried about the financial thing. They just want to touch the world and travel and not don't really care about making any money. Then right. cool. But if you're actually trying to eat and live and take care of your kids and tuition and food and tra- you know, all that, then you have to learn how to sell. Yeah. And that's probably the biggest issue for most people. Um, with Fred Pryor, when I first got started, and it's still the case to this day, the minimum acceptable sales average is about $25 per person. So that right. means when you write down the total amount of money that you, revenue you you you've sold that day, divide that by the number of attendees, then that number should be $25 or higher. Mm. And most trainers do not do that well. And I first got started, I got started in February of 2003. Um, That October, the, the head person at Fred Pryor called me up. My name was Pat, left me a voicemail saying, hey, I see that you are scheduled to go to California next month to do some seminars for us. But I'm looking at your sales, and since February, your sales average is only $2.34 per person. Wow. We need to have you at a minimum of $25 per person. So wow. since you're so low, we <laughs> want to take that next week of business away from you and give it to someone else who will be more profitable for themselves Ooh. and for us. Hope you understand. I hope you get better. I'm like, wow. She just, I didn't know they can just take business away from you. Like, we already agreed. I'm going to be going here on this date and I'll be here for this, you know, amount of time. I didn't know they can just, like, just snatch it back. I mean, it's their company, but I I didn't think they could, like, unschedule you. (laughs) Right. (laughs) For some business they already gave you. Yeah. So, I figured, all right, I'm going to get better. I just got to work harder and I'll, I'll figure it out. Just keep going. One thing about me is I've always been very persistent. Uh, yeah, I consider myself to be a pit bull at whatever it is I do. So I will lock down. I will not let go until I win, period, whatever it is. So I figured I'll just use that same strategy, just lock down. I'll figure it out. Yeah. So another month goes by. So now this is November. And Pat calls me again and left me about the same voicemail saying, hey, listen, look at your sales. You're still at $2.34 per person. You need to be at least 25 we see your schedule to go. I think it was might have been Utah or something uh, next month. She said, well, we can't send you there because you're not profitable. We'll send somebody else instead. I hope you get it together before it's too late. And hmm. that second call is what did it for me. A, 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 a switch just flipped in my mind because it felt like I was back in Philly getting robbed. Wow. Like she just reached in my pocket and just pulled out at least a thousand dollars for that week of business, even if I sold nothing to at least a grand that I would have had to spend with my wife for Christmas in December. So in my mind, she just stole my wife's Christmas present. Wow. So I got angry. I said, all right, I made a vow to myself. I said, there's going to be a day when this chick is going to be begging me to add business to my calendar. You want war? You got war now. It's on. Now the pit bull was out in full force. So now I was like, all right, you know what? I got to hire a coach because I don't know what I'm doing. Obviously, if I knew what I was doing, I'd have better results, but I don't know. So I had to go find a coach. I found somebody who was really good at sales. 
He wasn't in contract training. He was doing his own seminars. And I saw him just work miracles in front of the room where he would say, all right, buy my stuff. And then everybody get out this season, run to him with their order form. Say, I want it, I want it. I'm like, yo, that was amazing to watch that stampede happen. And I would go to different people that would do stuff like that. I'm like, hold up. So it is possible to get people so involved in what is it you're selling that they want it. So I hired him. You need to help me, man. I don't know what I'm doing. You got to help me in this sales game. He said, all right. He said, it's, co- it's going to cost you. It's about 15 grand for me to work with you. I'm like, all right. I don't have that money. But all right, let's do it, man. So I'm like, <laughs> I got to figure out a way to pay it because I, I, I saw what he did. And right. so we worked out something, and he started coaching me, and he started telling me about influence and persuasion. He told me that anytime I had a free day or a free weekend, go to any type of seminar around the country that's being taught by top people who get paid based on how well they can get people to say yes to right. their request. So I spent the next year going to so many real estate seminars and timeshare presentations and just any stocks, mutual funds, whatever. You know, you get those free advertisements in the mail, come to this hotel. You're going to learn about rich dad investments. So you're going to learn about this new product. So I will go to all those things because I want to see how do these people get folks they don't know to sign up for thousands of dollars in products and services in three, four, five hours. It's right. the same thing I'm doing. So how do we do it? So I started studying them, reading lots of books about those same topics, influence, persuasion, covert hypnosis, embedded suggestions, all that kind of stuff. And by the end of my second year with Fred Pryor, which was my first year of having a coach, my sales average rose to $27 per person. So mm-hmm. I was past that chopping block thing. So like, all right, cool. All right, I'm making some progress. Hopefully Pat will leave me alone. And then the next year, I got to like 40 something dollars a person. Then the following year, 67, which is my first six figure uh, year in income. And right. I'm like, all right, now we're rolling. I'm making more money than I was making at J&J. Yay! So my parents can get off my back a little bit too. Stop sweating me for making this bad decision to leave my great job. So now I'm making more money there. And then I realized while I was still traveling three and four weeks a month, because I was hustling on the road all the time to make this money, and I was newly married at the time, so my wife was not happy about me being on the road so much. Yeah. So I figured, all right, the following year, let me see if I can get my travel down to two weeks a month and still earn six figures. And fortunately, I was able to do that. And then the following year, I said, let me see if I can get down to one week a month and still earn six figures. And I did that. And then I've been doing that many times since then. And then I started coaching other people on how to do the same thing. And initially, I didn't want to coach anybody. People will say, can you help me? I'm like, nah, you can figure it out. Because I was thinking everybody's my competition. So I don't want to train my competition to compete for the same dates of business. Right. And my coach had to rearrange my mindset. And he said, well, you know, how are things going? I said, things are going great. I said, there's one little problem. People keep asking me to coach them. He said, what do you tell him? I'm telling him, no, I'm not training my competition. Right? <laughs> Plus, I'm not a coach. I didn't go to school for coaching. I don't have any coaching certifications, degrees, whatever. I have none of that. He said, man, listen, you got it all wrong. People don't care about your education. All they care about is can you help them? Right. Do you think that if you taught them what you've learned from me and your experiences over the last few years, that you would be able to help them increase their income? So definitely without question, he said, well, how dare you not coach them? Wow. It is your moral obligation to help people in any way you can to help them create a better lifestyle. Your name is Mr. Lifestyle, right? Wow. Wow. Yeah, but they would be my competition. He said, man, no, you don't want to have scarcity mentality. You want a prosperous, you want to have a prosperity mentality, which is the, he says, listen, a rising tide raises all ships. So if you train other people up, there will always be a higher place to you because you're seen as a person of value. You're seen as a person who likes to contribute to give back. So anytime an opportunity opens, you'll be the first person that's contacted because people will know you're not going to try to hold information back. You're not going to be stingy. You're not going to be a miser. You want to uplift people so you will always make more room for you. In fact, the Bible says your gift will make room for you. So wow. share with people, don't hold it back, and watch how your life and their life will go to a whole new level. So you've said a couple of important things here. The one big common theme that you've shared over the last answer here has been 
the word coach, <laughs> coaching, right? And so one of the things that I definitely want to remind and share with our listeners, a lot of times we feel like we need to get to another place. But if you are not able to see the way or see the road for yourself, a matter of fact, if they, there may be six roads in front of you and you're not sure which one to pick. You can spend your time figuring out which road or going down several wrong ones, or you can figure out, okay, who knows who's been down the road before and can help me get to the place that I need to get to. And that's why coaching is so critical and important. And I know just like Jamie, my very first coach cost $18,000. I I know it feels like it's unaffordable. It feels like you don't have the money to make it happen. But at some point, you figure out it's not just about the money. There are different ways to navigate relationships and, and, and invest in yourself, uh, ultimately. Yep. So let, let's, let's kind of move to, to wrap with this, man. You spoke about influence quite a bit. Is there anything that our audience should read in order to learn about influence? Definitely. The book of all books on influence. Of course, you got the Bible. Um, yep. And then if you want to focus in on influence itself, there is a book called Influence by Robert Cialdini. Yeah. Cialdini is spelled C I A L D I N I. Yeah. Robert we'll put that Cialdini. In the show notes, people. What'd you say? I said we'll put that in the show notes for them. Yes. That is it's considered like the Bible of influence. Right. Uh, Robert has been studying influence for like 30, 40 years. Uh, he's a professor. He may have retired now, but he was a professor at university and he kind of did this study where he just kind of wanted to go kind of uh, underground and uh, what do you call a detective that's like... Um, oh, undercover? Undercover, yeah. He wanted to go undercover. So he would like take these jobs at different influencing type professions. Like he would work as a car salesman for a little while. He would do some type of real estate thing for a little while. He would go become like a minister for like, he would go different places and have a job for a few months or years and kind of learn about that particular profession. So that gave him a chance to study what do the top people do in these different professions. So yes, they're different, but at the end of the day, they all got to get people to say yes. Right. Yes to giving your soul to Christ. Yes to buying this car. Yes to signing up for this timeshare thing. You got to say yes. So he kind of studied the top people and he came up with some of the strategies that were consistent amongst them all. And so, man, I devoured that book, man. Oh, man, that, man, that book, I, I can't recommend it enough. Another one is How to Win, Fl- How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Right. So if people don't know you, they don't like you, they don't trust you, they're not going to do business with you. So right. one of your first main goals to influence in someone is to get them to like you. And there's a whole sh- many strategies as to how you get people to like you. It's by design, not yeah. by accident. So, yeah, this, that's another good book. So, Excellent. I mean, I got a lot of them, man. How many you want? <laughs> <laughs> How about this? We want we want people to come to you so that you can share your knowledge even more with them. So tell us a little bit about if people want to be coached by you, if people want to have conversations with you outside of this podcast, where can they find you online? Sure. I'm on every social media platform. You can just look up Mr. Lifestyle, M-R Lifestyle. Um, you can call me directly. Here's my phone number, 215-852-6161. 215-852-6161. I've learned in business, man, you want to make it easy for people to contact you. Make it yeah. easy for people to get to know you. You know, some, some people are like, oh, I would never get my phone number out. Man, what you worried about? Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid. It's about, you know, generosity, man. Generosity. Yeah. Give, man. Help people out. Some people don't want to contact you directly. They want to look you up and research you and all that. So, again, go to any social media platform. There are multiple ways to make life happen and move forward. And there are multiple ways to make money if you're interested in speaking for a living. But even if you're interested in nothing more than becoming more influential, it's a great idea to understand selling and how to connect with different audiences. That's sales. That's business. That's leadership. 
So don't just listen to Jamie. Put something in action right now. Today, let's go. As always, if I can be helpful in that process, hop over to robertkennedy3.com. Grab some time on my calendar. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add a link in the show notes right now where you can book a 20-minute power-up session. That's right, 20 minutes where we can chat about anything you want or just how to get yourself moving to your next phase, your next season, your next place of power. Okay, I'm looking forward to our conversation. Can't wait. That's all, folks. Head over to the show notes, grab the links and resources from this episode and prior episodes. Then go over to Apple Podcasts to leave a ranking, rating, and review for the show. Also, head over to the other major podcast outlets wherever you listen to podcasts. Well, this was fun. I can't wait until the next time. See you on episode 30. Hey, don't forget, everything that happens to you in life is your stuff. Your stuff is your story. And your story deserves a stage. I'm Robert Kennedy III, RK3, and you've been listening to... The R-